guys, it's Eric here at Farpoint Farms in the mountains of North Carolina. Today starts a whole new series. I want to talk to you about solar. We have built a huge solar setup here back in 2020. A lot of mistakes were made building that. It's a great system. I'll leave the link in the description below to the entire series. And it does work. We power about a third of our house with it. But a lot of money was wasted. And if I could do it all over again, I certainly would have done things differently. Well, here we are in 2024 and we're doing things differently. We're building a much larger system. And while I have learned so much over the past four years about building solar, I figured it was time to share some of that information with you. So if you're considering building your first solar setup, well, maybe you don't make the same mistakes, whether they're costly or not, that I did. Tonight, we're gonna to be talking about solar panels. That's where we're gonna start this journey. And solar panels come in a variety of types and sizes. I'm gonna to talk to you about what they are and what they're best suited for. So let's get started. The first type of solar panel is probably the most common. It is the portable solar panel. Now these come in sizes all the way from 35 watts all the way up to, well, one that I have here is 600 watts. That's a lot of power. The portable part comes in the fact that they can be folded up, stored inside of a building, stored inside of an RV, stored inside of a camper, or stored inside your house, and only get used when you need them. That's pretty cool. So if you're gonna use these for camping, if you're gonna use these for hiking and you want something just to recharge a cell phone, a 35 watt unit like this one here would work beautifully. If you were going to set one up for an RV but you didn't want to attach anything permanently to the RV, a large four or 600 watt unit like this would probably give you all the power you need to power your television, your microwave, so on and so forth throughout the day while charging your battery. The downside to these is that they are not meant for permanent installation. That means you can't leave them outside forever. Water intrusion, cold weather, hot weather, things like this are eventually gonna wear down the materials that they're built out of. And with that wear, they will eventually fail. And so when investing, they're probably going to be the least smart thing to purchase. If you're gonna use it just for what I just described, those, those weekend trips in your camper, or those hikes to recharge your cell phone, they're gonna work fine. But if you're thinking about buying something like that and then later on using it for a more permanent installation, you're making the wrong call. Now the second type of solar panel I wanna talk about is called a flexible panel. These are more expensive, the most expensive option in the bunch, but they're pretty cool in the sense that if you were going to attach one to an RV, a camper, or even your buildings, that they do have the ability to fold somewhat and move somewhat and flex somewhat so that we can install them in places that may not be perfectly straight or that follow the contour of a car roof or, or a van roof. And that's why they're really popular. They're not the best option because the cost per watt is higher than the other two. But they do have the advantage of being able to be used in areas that you probably wouldn't wanna make a rigid panel, which is the third type of panel we'll cover here in a second. These flexible panels are going to give you less wind noise, offer less resistance going down the road, so they're perfect for RV use, car use, and van use. I have several of these panels that I've purchased for our camper van, and eventually they will produce just what I need them to do. They're a couple of hundred watts to keep my refrigerator going on trips and maybe to power my laptops and recharge my cell phones. Now the last type of solar panel is the most common and the most cost effective. It is the permanent, it is the solid, rigid solar panel like these here. And of course they go from mild to wild as well. We can get ones as small as five watts and we can get ones all the way up to 500 watts, which is massive. Now, when I built my system, I adopted for 100 watt panels. They're usually gonna offer the best bang for the buck because cost per watt. They're small enough and light enough that they can be shipped through regular mail and that makes them a little cheaper when you go on a place like Amazon or your favorite solar store to purchase the panels. When you look into the two, three, four, and even 500 watt sizes, those are usually gonna to have to be shipped by freight on a pallet. They are a better option if you're going to build a permanent solar setup, something I did not know in 2020 when I built my system, but they are gonna cost a little more upfront because of the fact that they're so much larger. But think about it this way, if you were gonna buy a rigid panel to set up, say, a 2,000 watt solar system, you could buy four 500 watt panels, and that gives you four connections. Or you would have to buy 
10 100 watt panels in order to reach the same thing. With those 10 panels comes 10 different sets of connections and that increases the odds of an issue with one of those connections, a problem that I've run into with my own solar system. The connections, although they're designed to be waterproof, eventually water intrusion stuff gets in and that leads to issues. These connectors are, they're okay, but they're not perfect. And being not perfect, on several occasions in the last four years, I've checked the output of my 1200 watt solar system and found that it was only producing three or 400 watts. That occurred because in the series, one of those solar panels had failed or the connection to that solar panel had failed, causing the entire system to drop out. When we're talking about a 500 watt panel and only four sets of connections, the odds of that happening are far less. And so that is why the larger panels are a better option if you are going to go with a permanent install like the one that I built here. Now in 2024, this year, I'm building a much larger solar system. I currently have a thousand watts of uh, 200 watt panels that I have here. These are from Calpha. And I'll be adding in the rest of the stuff as this series goes on. But I also have my original 1200 watt system and 100 watt panels. And I have no desire to get rid of that, so I'll just be adding to the system. In fact, I'm going to be adding another 2,000 watts on top of the 2,200 watts that I now have here at the house, giving me a 4,200 watt system. Most systems, if you're thinking about going completely off-grid, are going to be from the five to 7,000 watt range. And if you're going to live in a lifestyle where you want full power all the time with no compromise, you're looking at more like 17 to even 25 thousand watts of solar. We neither have the money nor the desire to go that big here at the house and we also have a limited amount of space. I guess the next thing that I'm going to do here in part two is show you where you want to position your solar panels to get the best light. If we're talking about an RV that's simple. We're just going to be putting it on the roof. It's not the best location you can have because the sun is hardly ever directly over our heads. But in the case of an RV, that's the sacrifice we made. With a foldable portable solar panel like this one here, we have the ability to set up at a campsite and position those panels for the best possible sunlight. The same is true with a permanent installation. You're gonna to wanna to map out your property. You're gonna use a, a, a website or an app and figure out where the sun is, what your declination, that's the angle, that you're going to be facing depending on where you're at in the country that can change and that is where you're going to position your solar paneling to get the best possible sunlight for the longest possible time well that'll be in part two my friends and i hope you're enjoying this new series i hope you'll stick around with it it doesn't matter if you're thinking about building something for your car or building something to go completely off grid i am positive that if you stick with it you'll learn something from this series till next time my friends take care